Microsoft's slogan for Windows, Life Without Walls, is actually referring to the fact that if you have a Linux disk, you can access any Windows file you want without knowing the password. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm Under the Street, and before we even start today, I want you all to boycott Motorola, because I just recorded a 30-minute video, and this thing crashed, and I, I didn't even get the recording. So, screw that. No more Motorola. So last week, I reprimanded you all for not asking enough Linux-based questions, because I assume people would have questions, because there has to be a reason you're not already using it. But I forgot something really important. Um, this video probably should have come at the beginning of the series rather than at the very end. So I know someone who's not very computer literate, uh, and she's also afraid of the internet, so I'm not going to say her name. But I asked her last week, um, why aren't you using Linux? And she said she don't, didn't know how to use it, same as everyone else. And I said, alright, well assume you know how to use it. Assume you know how to install it. Uh, assume that... You already know everything there is to know about Linux. Why aren't you using it? And she said, well, let's take a step back. Why do I even want to use Linux? So why do you even want to use Linux in the first place? Why am I so gung-ho about Linux? After all, I, I make it clear that it does the same things in a different way, but the same things do get accomplished. What's wrong with Windows? Well, the first thing that's better about Linux than Windows is the fact that it's faster. Speed, speed, speed. Now, this is a little different for different people, depending on how you had Windows set up, what kind of computer you have. But as a general rule, as your computer gets less powerful, the amount that Linux benefits you gets bigger. So even though on my i7 workstation here, uh, Windows and Linux have a marginal difference in speed. On my AMD laptop, per se, um, let's just say that after I switched to Linux, I really wasn't happy about going back to Windows. So if you have a Celeron processor or or a Pentium, then that is a huge reason right off the bat to use Linux. But why is it faster? Well, um, let's use a program for example, uh, Google Chrome. Now I love Google Chrome, it's my favorite browser, not because of stability anymore, because Google Chrome has been crashing a lot on all of my devices recently, but Google Chrome is cross-platform. That means that it's on Mac OS, Linux, Windows, Android, iOS, it's on everything. So when you install Google Chrome on Windows, you install Google's program, and you also install the Google Updater. Now, little do you know, that Google Updater is started every time you turn on your computer. So even if you're not using a Google product, Google is still running in the background, taking up resources like RAM, processing power, but on Linux it doesn't do that. Linux doesn't allow startup scripts unless you manually define startup scripts that you want. And there is no Google Updater for Linux because all of your updates are installed with the same program. Which brings me to number two application management. In Windows, Microsoft wants you to use all of their products. Microsoft basically says, okay, here's our operating system. Now you make something for it. So everybody is free to do whatever they want in terms of coding for that operating system. This leads to a lot of inconsistency in how programs look, how they behave, and how they perform. Also, a lot of programs, almost all Windows programs, install something of a startup script along with an updater. Now once again, Linux does not really allow startup scripts, unless you make them yourself. But with Linux, you don't go to a website and download a program. I mean, you can, but that's really not the best way to do it. What you want to do is you want to add whatever program's repository to your software sources. That's basically like requesting a catalog from a company that makes a program. You add that repository to your software management program and then you can install the software and uninstall it uh, in the same program that you uninstall and install all your other programs from. Now it might seem like a lot, but there is a search function and it really is quite organized. And it's even better with updates because you don't have to go around your Google updater, your Apple updater, your update this, update that, because all of these catalogs, they're all collected together. And whenever you update your software sources or refresh your package lists, then all of those catalogs are updated together. So then you can look through all the new catalogs at the same time and see what new stuff is available. You can download your updates for Google Chrome, for uh, VLC, for whatever games you might have, for Wine, and for the basic Linux headings, all in the same updater program. 
And that's really contradictory because Linux is like a free operating system. It's supposed to be open, but then all of your software is still managed uh, within one specific package manager. Um, you can pick which package manager you use, but people just sometimes get the wrong uh, illusion as to how they manage programs on Linux. Alright, so let's say that your computer is fast enough, you don't care about Windows' speed, and that you really don't give a crap about the um, software management either because you never really install anything anyways. Why do you want Linux? Well, believe it or not, Linux actually has a number of user-friendly features that Windows doesn't. For instance, I'm just going to um, log in here and virtual desktops. I made a whole video about those. I only have one screen here, and it's a CRT. It's not the best thing. But with virtual desktops, I have four different desktops on my one screen. That doesn't come with Windows. I mean, you can get uh, utilities to add this, yes, but it's not built into the operating system, so you have a lot more potential for failure. Linux also has a lot more personalization options. Now granted, if you don't want to touch these, you're fine using it with the default settings, but I mean, if you really wanted to, you can make Linux look like Windows, you can make Linux look like Mac OS, you can make Linux look like something the world's never even seen before. Because, once again, even though you don't have to, it is possible to modify every single thing within Linux. A reason developers might want to develop for Linux. Linux code is open source. That means that the developer can see the, the machine code that Linux runs on. Windows is not open source. They just have to go on what Microsoft tells them. So with Windows, they're kind of like blindly, blindly painting a picture based on something someone's describing to them over the phone. Whereas with Linux, they're free to study what they're painting however they want. So you have a lot less crashes, you have a lot less programs disagreeing with each other. And even if you don't write in machine code, uh, Linux is great with other runtimes, like Java, I mean Python. Let me be honest, I hate Python. I, it was my first programming language ever, don't get me wrong. Like, then it wasn't so bad. Now I realize how low its latency for errors is, and I also realize how slow its programs can be. I have yet to find a multimedia program that is not written in Python. But Linux still embraces these programs, while Windows just wants everyone to develop in Microsoft's format. So even for developers starting out, I mean, you have a lot more options in terms of what language you want to use. Hmm, so we're faster, we're more stable, we're, um more features, trying to think of anything else I've left out here. Oh, we're more secure. Like I said, uh, if you have a Windows computer, and this is not true for like enterprise level encrypted drives, I know. I'm just saying for the average consumer, you have a password on your Windows computer, no? Um, it's probably not a BIOS password, even though those can be bypassed physically. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the BIOS password is not a problem at all. You may have a Windows password so that others cannot access your files, but unless you're encrypting your hard drive, or sometimes even if you're encrypting your drive, I have what's called a live distribution. I put this in your computer's CD drive. It doesn't have to install. It just loads right off the CD, and um, then I have a fully usable Linux desktop. So not only can I play Space Invaders on your password-protected computer, but I can also access all your files and browse the web, too. So unless your hard drive is heavily encrypted, or even moderately encrypted, I mean, I'm not trying to be unfair here, really, you are going to be more secure under Linux than Windows. Can I take a quick sidebar? I want to talk about Mac OS. Mac computers, it's possible to run Linux on them. It is. But uh, what do I think about, about Linux on Macs? Well, here's what I think. I think if you are a heavy Linux user, then, I mean, you can try putting Linux on a Mac natively. Um, honestly, I would use a virtual machine or just use Mac OS. People laugh at Mac OS a lot because it's easy to use. Well, here's what you don't get. Mac OS is based off of Unix. If you don't know, Linux was also originally based off of Unix. So Mac has the same stability things that Linux does. And security. Even some of the, um, the user stuff, like virtual desktops that I talked about, Mac OS has. And, yes, even though I really don't like the idea of an app store on a desktop computer, that's 
basically what package managers are anyways, so you got better program management on Mac OS 2. So if you're laughing at people who use Mac OS, you better be laughing at Windows 2. So yeah, those are just a few quick reasons um, why you want to use Linux. Once again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I didn't upload this sooner. I, it just completely slipped my mind that some people don't know the benefits of Linux. So yeah, there you go. Speed, stability, security, and um, just it's it has a lot of great features and a lot of user choice. I mean, Windows, if you don't like it, you can change some settings in the control panel. But Linux, I mean, first of all, let's say that you don't like a certain desktop manager. If you don't like the way that this is set up with the taskbar at the bottom and a start menu at the bottom left and a notification bar at the bottom right, then guess what? You can change it. You can have it to where you have something called an activities menu in the top left and your system time in the top right. Um, and yeah, it, it's way it's a way different experience and I actually forgot to cover that this time around. But maybe I'll show you during my live stream that I'm thinking about doing. But yeah, if you don't like just even just the general setup of your Linux desktop, you can download a different desktop environment. This one's KDE. I used it because it's the most like Windows. But you have GNOME, uh, LXDE, XFCE, um, Enlightenment. You have a ton of other options out there. And even if it's not just the desktop environment, the distributions. Let me introduce you to one of my favorite websites of all time, distrowatch.com. This thing covers BSD and Linux distributions all over the place. And I mean, yeah, there are just dozens, dozens of different Linux distributions. There are probably hundreds, there are just dozens on this website. And there actually was one thing I forgot to mention during the video, and that is the fact that Linux is free. Um, you may or may not realize this, but Windows is not free. You do get it with most new computers nowadays, but if you ever want to upgrade, it's usually over $100 to do that. And if you want to put Windows on a computer that did not already have Windows, it's like $400 to do that. Um, Linux is a little different. Linux is completely free the first time. And also, Linux, you get free upgrades for life. You don't have to worry about paying so that you'll have the same thing as everyone else. Uh, you don't have to worry about paying for security-related things. Um, oh yeah, and that's another thing too. Uh, Linux doesn't need antivirus software because Linux does not get viruses. If you want to know why Linux doesn't get viruses, let me ask you this. Why does Windows get viruses? So yeah, you don't have to pay for updates, you don't have to pay for uh, antivirus software, you don't have to pay for anything with Linux because it's all free, because there are a lot of really dedicated people like me spreading the word and helping out. I hope that I have convinced you that just trying Linux out is an okay idea. Please contact me if you have any other questions about anything I've talked about today and the other Life on Linux videos, just about Linux in general. And now that I've explained to you the stuff that's better about Linux than Windows, um, now I can ask you once again, why aren't you using Linux? Other than the fact that you just got convinced to about five seconds ago and you haven't really had time to install it yet. But anyways, that's just about everything I wanted to say in this video. If you notice the quality difference, sorry, I do usually record with that phone I just chucked across the room. But today I'm recording with my iPod, as I probably will be until I have enough money to get, oh my god, a real video camera. Um, I'm thinking that I do a live stream, specifically for Life on Linux, probably only an hour this time. <laughs> given that we had a three-hour live stream um, last winter and nobody showed up to that. So yeah, maybe I'll do like an hour live stream uh, this summer when Life on Linux is finally over and I can install Windows finally on another partition because I'm starting to get into some gaming. Also, Hackintosh. Um, maybe a possibility? So yeah, I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm out on the street and I will see you later. See ya.